Hello, everyone. This is Derek with Reef Automation. This is episode 13 of the GHL versus Apex series. In this episode, we're going to go over third-party control and what the Apex and the GHL can control external from their own equipment. So we're going to first start with the Apex. So on the Apex, uh, it has a variable speed port on the uh, Apex unit, the main unit. As you can see, there are four channels, V1, V2, V3, and V4. If you have an Apex EL, it does not have these, and you'd have to get the VDM module that Neptune sells, which would give you the V1 through V4 ports. It also gives you a serial port for additional functionality on older systems and older lighting systems that use the DIN 9 or the DB9 cable, as you can see. And also, of course, Neptune sells the conversion cables in order to use this. So you have the variable speed dimming ports, which allow you to dim um, and also ramp different pumps, such as the Reef Octopus uh, Varios pumps have a 0 to 10 dimming input, and some of the lighting has 0 to 10 dimming inputs, and those can be used for 0 to 100 dimming capabilities. And that is used universally throughout most of the equipment that is sold that you can hook up your Apex directly to. Now, in order to program this, it's quite simple. All you need to do is find your variable speed port. Now, on our demo project here, we have it hidden currently, so we're going to unlock it to get those variable speed ports out. We have the 1, 2, and 3, as I mentioned, so we'll bring those down here just so you can see them. And again, it's just 0 through 100%. So you're going to program them based on that. Now, if we come in here, you can actually click on this wizard, which would actually give you the ability to adjust throughout the day what you want your speed to do. I do have a tutorial video strictly on how to go about doing this. But you can see it's rather simple. You can change the timing. You can change the adjustment points. And, of course, you can adjust the on and off throughout the day as well. Uh, there is a gear up here that allows you to go to advanced and add advanced programming to this as well. So if you wanted to add, you know, potentially an off command or an on command, depending on something else, you can also do that there. So this is where the variable speed programming is done. And again, there are four different ports here, and there are cables that you can use to use the variable speed ports. And of course, the easier way to do the programming is with tasks. So of course, you can hit the task button here go to title and just type in variable output and then you can program the variable speed port here through tasks as well and with the apex standard edition it has four and if you had an apex el you would need the vdm module so the ghl also has the same thing as the apex so if we uh, move over to the ghl on the ghl we have instead of two ports it actually has three ports three yellow ports so instead of it giving you four V ports, this gives you six V ports, so two extra ones on the GHL. Now, to program this, uh, you're going to go into the 0 to 10 interfaces right here. So, once you're here, you can click on one of the interfaces, which are V1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and click on it and make it a function. In this case, you'd make it illumination and then you'd give it a function parameter. So, the function is here in the illumination mode and you'd go to illumination channels and this is where you would configure the actual channels so we'll give that a second and in this case we're configuring illumination one you set up a time in which you want to set the brightness or in this case it could be a pump and you can set up a couple other configurations here we're not going to go into this in full detail but this is where you set up the brightness and timing for setting up your v1 through v10 channel so we'll go back to the Apex now. A couple other things that it can do for third party is the IOTA. Now the IOTA stands for Internet of Things. So currently the Internet of Things works off of AI devices such as AI Primes, AI Hydras. To do that it's quite simple. Uh, you'd go to a task, you would then go to Internet of Things, and then you'd attach an Internet of Things device, and it'll say if it's in the system, for instance, if you had something on your Wi-Fi, it would show up here. I don't have any AI devices, so it's not going to show up here. This is where you would set it up, and then it would just become another device similar to the V ports that I had previously mentioned. 
Now, in the GHL, they don't have that ability. Uh, from what I can tell, there is no way to add an IOTA device. So that's one thing that the Apex has that the GHL does not have. Also in the Apex, they have the ability to run Vortec and also Radeon generations 1 through 4 using a WXM module. So it's pretty simple. It emits a Zigbee type connection to the Radeon and the Vortec. All it requires is Aquabus. You plug that in, you set it up through the modules, and again, you have another device that you can control. Now I have a WXM controlling a number of pumps and my Radeons on my reef tank, and this is how it works through the WXM. Now there is a disclaimer to the WXM. Neptune has announced that they are no longer gonna produce these. So if you have uh, older Vortex or older Radeons, you might wanna pick up one of these before they no longer sell them. I find them to be very helpful if you wanna control Ecotech devices. So this is the WXM from Neptune. So now we'll go over the GHL, which they also have something very similar. So they have a device that hooks up via the PAB, which is called a Provolux Vortex Controller. Now keep in mind it says Vortex Controller. Um, it only will work with Vortex and it will not work with Radions. Um, also, of course, just like the Apex, it will not work with the newer pumps and the newer Radions. It will also not work with Vectras, which also the Neptune will not work with. Now to program this, it's relatively simple. It works the same way as the programming of the V ports. Now I don't have one of these to demonstrate the programming. However, it is still done through the zero to 10 interfacing that I showed you earlier. So this is another device that potentially will become discontinued by GHL. Uh, it hasn't been announced yet, but there's a good chance they will no longer sell it similar to that of the Apex. So getting back to the Apex, they do have the IO port, which is the DIN connection on the controller. And it looks something uh, kind of like a mouse, uh, mouse port or a keyboard port back in the day. And that's a switch input port. And that will allow you to put such, such things as uh, buttons or relay controls, things that you want to turn off and on and get information from that would be used in the switch inputs. And it's typically programmed similar to that of a leak detector or to an optical sensor, which I've done some videos on. On the GHL, they also have something very similar where they have the connection. The connection is a little different, um, but it's called the switch port connection. And the switch port connection, they also provide you with a breakout box that you can plug in whatever you want in terms of buttons. And they are programmed a little bit differently, but they are on the digital input. And this is where you would program them for each one and you would say what the function is. And again, we're not gonna really get into the more technical programming, but that's uh, another third party type device that you can add to both of the systems. Now I had mentioned in a previous video that the Apex will do voice control, whereas the GHL will not do voice control. So I would believe that would be a third party type device that the Apex does that the GHL does not do. So this is gonna be the last informational episode on the Apex versus GHL series. I have two additional episodes coming here, which I will go over my review of both products. I will go over my opinions of both products and give you a final synopsis of how I feel about both of them after using them for two months. So hopefully you liked this video, and if you did, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button below. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. You can see all the Apex versus GHL videos right here. And I hope you have a wonderful day.